Teams have already traveled down to Orlando for the NBA bubble. J.R. Smith already is clowning already, talking about how this reminds him of his basically his AAU days when they have a crappy lunch. My bag was my food. A war. <laughs> What's up? Is that it? A war. You know what I'm Look at my homie. Look at the look at the homie. Yeah, man. Sack and shit, you know what I'm saying? Sack and shit. <laughs> and hey, hey, DJ Spot Star all over again. Hey, you trip, bro. Hey, you trip, bro. Hey, you trip, bro. Hey, you trip, bro. There you go. Look, look. There you go. Ooh, we out here. One of the key things that players are admittedly and openly criticizing is the food in Orlando. They wanted, I guess, five-star meals or whatever the case, but they're accustomed to getting, but they're not getting them in Orlando. So here's the thing. This bubble has ramifications that we may see down the line and are, are going to hit us that we, we haven't even really processed or thought about. This might actually change the way the NBA goes down further and down the line and implemented certain things regarding teams. One of the things you gotta understand, this bubble is gonna reveal who actually likes and loves to play basketball. A lot of guys just here for the paycheck. They just say, hey, I'm getting paid. It is what it is. I don't give a F who does this, who does that. I don't care. I'm just getting money, bread. Now that you're in a bubble, who's really practicing? Who's homesick? AAU days, like J.R. Smith said, who is in it for the love of the game. This is gonna this is gonna show the cream and rise the cream to the top. Not only that though, guys, we're gonna see a level of play we haven't seen since basically the Jordan era. And what I mean by that is everything's gonna be so competitive because guys aren't thinking about well I get to go on my hundred foot yacht or I get to drop my Maserati around. The guys are gonna be like, this is all I got right now. I can't even leave the bubble. I can talk to my family but I can't leave. So if we lose a game, guys are going to be ridiculing me for the rest of the week. And not only that, it's not like you, you lose a game and you travel. Hey, you lose a game and you see the guy the next day, and he's like, yeah, I'll bust your ass. So it's a, it's, a, it's a different kind of thing. Like, So the bubble has good ramifications, but also it might have some negative ramifications. What if the NBA likes what they see and they try to get in with a monopoly with Disney and say, hey, we want less travel for our players in general and have one-site games? Or, guess what? Remember NBA TV, how you have to pay a little extra in your cable bill? Well, now, since they see everybody's going to want to be tuning in, now they might even make it even worse. N NBA TV Plus, where, you know, you only can see certain games in prime time, and then all the other games, you're going to have to pay even more extra. So, this has positive things, but it's going to have some negative ramifications as well. The bubble is going to change the way we see players, especially especially since they want to mic them up. And that's what I mean. Like, It's one thing to play basketball. You have millions of dollars and everything's going good. But in the time of pandemic, things are going around. People are upset. And then you're playing basketball, and it's a lot of competition. A lot of players that you thought were superhuman are going to come down to your size. And you're going to see them say things and do things like how you do things when you're playing pickup. So I don't know if that's a good thing, the exposure, or it's a bad thing because some guys that are your hero might turn out to be a villain in disguise. So we'll see how it plays out. Who's Junction? Who's Me Hoopla? Like, comment, subscribe.